Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Dave and Evelyn from the camera store and today we're at Tyler Stallman studio because we have our hands on a pre-production Canon EOS R5C. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> of course, Tyler Stallman has a YouTube channel as well that you're going to check out. We're going to be referring to it because we are both taking a look today at the pre-production Canon EOS R5. Yeah, and the reason we thought he would be a great candidate for it is that he already owns the Canon R5 and the C70. So he, who else can we find who's a better candidate to talk about a camera that's sort of in between the two? When you first heard about this announcement, um, did you think to yourself like, okay, yeah, this camera could replace both of mine? Right. What were your thoughts? So I didn't really feel like it could replace them. My first impression was maybe this is what I wish had come out earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but um, owning these two right now, the R5 and the C70, it felt like it um, they balance each other out very well because I shoot both photography and video. Um, and the high-end stuff from the C70 is exactly where I want it to be. And the photography stuff on the R5 is also where I want it to be. If I didn't have either of these, this would be extremely tempting um, because it does cr like cover the ground in between them really really well and can you tell us a little bit about what kind of work you do with these cameras sure yeah so uh, our, our work is I mean like you said YouTube videos it's a, a lot of what I do and so um, often the C70 is great for that in terms of like a roll I can plug mics directly into it I can record for a long time um, a lot of really flexible stuff for long recording sessions and then we also do commercial photography and video, usually uh, shooting the same subjects with both cameras kind of at the same time. And for that, uh, it, it's great to be able to quickly flip back and forth and nice to actually have two cameras so that I'm not changing all of the settings, which can be an issue. Let's say I was just using the R5. Flipping between the two settings can sometimes mess you up a bit and you forget to switch something over. Um, Whereas when I have two cameras, I know that they are set separately and I can kind of keep my ideas apart. Canon introduced the R5C as a update basically to the R5, which is a fantastic stills camera. So it shares the same sensor, a lot of the same dynamics when it comes to photography, but it's more video that things get really exciting with it. So the other interesting thing is they've actually made this part of the cinema line by integrating the interface. And so you have the option of switching between the Canon R5 photo interface and actually changing operating systems completely by going into more of a cinema or a video mode. Um, and that means that a lot of all of your custom buttons, they have dual functionality for each different operating system. And it just functions a lot more like the C70. Waveforms, oh. it has vector scopes. Uh, vector scopes, it has uh, false color, things like that. To I mean, help the, this is the most true hybrid that I've really seen anybody attempt, where it, it is trying to split it right down the middle and it is hoping to do both pretty much equally well. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and you have to sort of decide, are you using it for stills or for video? Because it takes about, what, we figured eight seconds for it to switch between stills and video? Yeah, because it is actually rebooting the whole system, oh. and you get a completely different menu. Um, just the interface in general is totally different. Was there anything with the R5 in particular that you felt Canon was missing on the video side? If you were to have this as your, as your main camera, you're not able to bring your C70 with you. Did you have frustrations that way? Yes. So <laughs> there's, there's a few things that I love, and these aren't so much knocks against the R5. I understand why they're not there, but the things I love about the C70, huge one is built-in ND filters. Mm -hmm. I know some people, um, don't get as excited as I do about it. 100%, I think people really underestimate how valuable having built-in ND filters are, period. Like once you put it into practical purposes, it's amazing to actually work with. Yeah, yeah. and I guess this, there's two things that the R5C are still missing mm. that the C70 have right. that it doesn't. And so you touched on one of it, it's the built-in ND filters. Um, and then the other one is on the audio side of things. Sure, yeah. Um, and so again, this is kind of between the two in that you don't have any kind of built-in ports besides just the standard um, microphone port. Mm -hmm. um, you do now, though, have a hot shoe where you can use a new microphone setup. Yeah, it's very cool. So now we can we have the newer hot shoe from Canon, which allows you to put on their, their Tascam XLR port so we can have nice, uh, way better quality audio than we can do with the R5. You have it built into the C70 with the mini XLRs, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So what I've become addicted to with the C70 <laughs> is that I just put this in my bag and it's all there. 
you know, I really don't need to think about much else. It has mini XLR adapters, so as long as you have the cables <laughs> that are gonna support it, you're just like good to go. So you're not losing anything in terms of quality or like what you're able to do. It's just less total items in your kit. It's all in one pack in the C70. Now here's a question. How important <laughs> is it to you to have the red record button? <laughs> uh, extremely. I mean, that is the, yeah, that's the visual thing that jumps out to you. I mean, not really. Actually, while we were using this, I was pressing the wrong, the wrong button. button because I'm so used to, um, I mean, yeah, whatever you get used to is really the thing. I mean, the, the reason I would choose between, or currently actually, already, when I choose the R5 to shoot video instead of the C70, it's because it has advantages in sharpness. When you mm. use the HQ mode, which I, I believe the uh, R5C is always shooting in the sharper downsampled HQ, it's noticeably sharper than the C70. C70 is not the sharpest camera out there, even though it's shooting in true 4K, it's got a native 4K sensor. Um, you get a sharpness advantage, but what you get out of the C70 is C-Log2, and a bit more color information, a bit more dynamic range information. So that's how I make the choice. When I'm looking for uh, you know, better total image, image tonality, it's the C70. If absolute sharpness is critical, it's the R5, or maybe not the, <laughs> the R5C, <laughs> sure. That's very interesting. Yeah, now the other thing that the, um, the R5C has, which I really appreciate, and Drew uh, will say, is it has a tally lamp, where the R5 does not. Right, yeah. and yes. that's actually... Yeah. And when you're on camera, it's, it's really nice to know, are you being recorded or not? Some of these small features are actually really big features. Yeah. Once you're out in the field and you're trying to get your work done, those little niceties start to add up, and when they're not there, it can slow you down um, in unexpected ways. I think the biggest physical difference with this camera has to be the cooling system. And of course, that was the huge point of contention when the R5 was released because it had these really impressive specs, but you couldn't use them practically. Um, so what are your thoughts on them integrating this cooling system? I mean, Canon has already proven that when there is a cooling system, mm. it works. So <laughs> I, I'm, you know, I'm not worried about this overheating. It's not even a question to me. This, I fully expect to last. I mean, the tests we've seen so far look like it's gonna be a complete non-issue. Already with the R5, if you don't shoot in HQ mode, there are ways around it so it doesn't ever overheat, it's also in crop mode. Um, so it's mostly that you can shoot in the best, the best quality modes and still not worry about it. Image quality wise, I expect them to be virtually the same. I don't think there's gonna be any difference in the samples we've been shooting so far. I haven't seen anything yet. So, um, you know, it, there will be the light raw, so maybe it'll be easier to, to shoot in raw more often. Because the file size is so big and it's so clumsy to work with, I often don't bother with the R5 right now. So maybe I'd use it a bit more often. Um, but other than that, I'd actually expect virtually identical image performance out of them. I think it's just a bit more flexibility about which codec you want to use, but they're still probably going to look virtually identical. Now, they both shoot 8K video, the R5 and the R5C. How often in your workflow do you have any need for 8K video? Never. I mean, I, <laughs> I, 8K I, 60. I never turn on 8K in this. What's nice about it, though, is the oversampled 4K. Like I said, I mean, it is sharper than the C70. You can see that the sensor is gathering more of a certain kind of data, more sharper data, um, but uh, the actual resolution is just, it's not important to me at all. So uh, it, it, it's more about that, like when you're in 4K, you know you're getting the sharpest image, but all that extra data I, I would throw away, so I just don't bother shooting in it really. Right. I'm hoping that the Cinema Raw Light on the R5C is a bit more efficient than the Canon Raw Light on the R5. I don't know what the difference is yet, but I hope it runs a little more smoothly because <laughs> then I would use it more often. And also you have a low quality mode so that you can compress it a little bit more, that would also make me use it more often if I can fit more footage on each memory card. And that's the thing, we don't, you don't realize, you, we put a 64 gig memory card into the R5C, and shooting it's, at the highest resolution not, possible, yeah, we got four minutes, right, is what we were <laughs> told right. to record. So think about how much data, if you want to record much, anything longer than four minutes, just data management and that whole workflow process in post, right. uh, it's a huge process. Well, we're on the topic of RAW though, a huge update, like I did not expect this coming, C70 is getting raw soon. So mm. there will be, a f with a firmware update, never, plan like when I bought this, nobody was <laughs> expecting it. So all of a sudden, this is gonna be a lot closer in performance to these two other cameras because it'll have that same uh, raw ability. And so I'm super curious to test them once they can go directly side by side with RAW. No, and that's the thing, like all the features that they currently have right now, firmware could turn everything around. Yeah. You know, things that are com we're complaining about now potentially could be gone, you know, next firmware update. Mm -hmm. 
Now, when it comes to powering these cameras, both the Canon R5 and the R5C use the LPE6 battery that's been with Canon forever. However, we do have some issues with it when you're shooting 8K video. Now, the C70 uses the BP series of batteries. Now, Tyler, how are you addressing the battery issues in your life? I mean, the C70 <laughs> has been the opposite of battery issues. Mm. It's just been incredible. Like, I can have the, you know, the smaller uh, BP A30 batteries. Two of these will usually get me through almost a complete day of shooting, nice. which is pretty great. And then I've also picked up this much larger battery that has like a D-tap on the back and a USB, um, and that can power an external monitor and stuff. And this, if it's just powering the camera, can shoot for almost a full day. There you go. When I'm shooting video on the R5, <laughs> one battery would never last a whole day. I wouldn't even think about that. I mean, I'm looking at more like three or four batteries to get through a day. And if it's getting more challenging on the R5C, that could be a real challenge. I mean, you'd have to really double the amount of batteries you have and you'd be switching them quickly. Um, so it would be something I would certainly be thinking about, and plus you don't have an easy way to power anything mm. externally like I was talking about here. One of the interesting things here is that when you have the battery installed in the camera, there's a limitation. And we were just talking about this, that basically um, if you're shooting in the higher frame rates in raw formats, um, you're not actually able to power the lens mount. And so what this means for, for cinematographers is that they can either use manual lenses, they use cinema lenses, or they basically just don't have iris control and autofocus. So do you think that's an issue? I, I just don't think it's a problem at all. I mean, if you're shooting in raw formats, first of all, it's probably something important and you are hopefully not using auto iris at the time. Um, you can preset your iris, you can preset everything on the lens and then start shooting. It does mean you're using manual focus, but there are solutions to that. There's ways that you can either add a focus pulling mechanism or you can use cinema glass or, you know, at that level, I stop worrying about it as much. So yeah, it would be better if it did, but it doesn't concern me a lot and wouldn't restrict a lot of things that I shoot. And again, that's only if you're exclusively just using the battery installed in the camera. It, mm -hmm. it, you are able to power the lens mount if you're using an external power source. In Canon's case, it has to be a minimum of nine volts and three amps. Um, and so the one that they've approved is this anchor. It's a boat anchor. It's a boat Sorry. anchor. <laughs> you know? um, but if you're rigging this camera up, which I assume with this camera, most people would be using, you know, like a gimbal in some cases or using some sort of cage. Um, so you can set all of that up. Um, but the other thing that we should mention is that this camera doesn't have image stabilization built into it. It doesn't right. have that mechanism. And that's to make way for the cooling system. So that will actually frustrate me a bit. If my pair was the R5C and the C70 together, I'd be missing out on something that right now, when I switch back and forth between the R5 and the C70, sometimes I'll grab the R5 because I know I can do something handheld, just walking around carefully and it will look good enough. It'll be absolutely usable. Um, so I, I like that about this pairing. Now, if you only have one camera, this has maybe enough advantages that you don't worry about it, but I would admit, I'd miss <laughs> this. I think they did a good job on the R5. Well, it does have digital stabilization, which right. is a 1.1 crop, and it does work with their image stabilized lenses to give you some stabilization. But uh, the R5 definitely has the advantage with that, no doubt about it. Now, I know we haven't had a ton of time with the R5C, but you know, we were able to run it through some tests to see what the footage looks like just yeah. from a very practical standpoint. That's great. Um, so what are your first impressions when looking at the footage and, and starting to work with it, grading it? Well, yeah, let's take a look at it here so far. Yeah, so first of all, what were we shooting in in this? This was C-Log? So yeah, the, this is the C70 on this side, and this is the R5C over here. And uh, the C70 is using C-Log 2, which I really prefer. I find there's just more flexibility working with it afterwards. And the R5C is shooting in C-Log 3, which is the most flexible format it has. And I just did a really quick grade here just to kind of get them similar. And no surprise, great news, they come together <laughs> really nicely. They both look good. And like, Ken's always been trying to, they always try to make all their cameras kind of be able to mix and match. All their lenses, they want the same kind of color, tonalities, that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'm really happy with, with both of the looks here. Well, let's talk about the autofocus performance between, between these three cameras here. Now. Yeah, I mean, first of all, you had... <laughs> I don't care how sharp the video is. If it's not model, <laughs> models. We That's modeled true. for the autofocus <laughs> test, yeah. Um, that was the most fun I had all day, I have to admit. That was, that was, that was <laughs> I worked up a sweat, <laughs> I think, actually. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I mean, when it comes to the autofocus performance, again, you know from your experience with the C70 and the R5 that the Canon autofocus for video has worked 
fairly well. Um, we were kind of wondering how the behavior was going to change, again, switching between the different operating systems when you move from the photo to the video mode. Um, so what were your thoughts? Well, they, they all work well. There's a bit of a compromise on the C70 because of the adapter, so it makes it a smaller focus area. But overall, all three performed great, especially when there's a face in the frame. Canon loves to see a face, it understands it well. And the R5C adds eye detect, which is not available on the C70. I find that with the R5 anyway, in my previous experiences, it'll lock onto random objects much more easily and stay sticky with them. So if you don't have a facing frame, the R series is doing a bit better job, and that's where the C70 falls down a bit. Now, overall, we found the autofocus performance on all three of these cameras was very, very good. Although I have to admit, I did like how the um, RC would kind of show you the secondary face on the screen. It's showing you what it's actually paying attention to. Now, when you want to switch faces, you certainly can, but you know what the camera is concentrating on. Where the R5 would, I'm sure it sees the secondary face in the screen, but it doesn't show you what it's thinking about. So you're not really sure what you're going to switch to when you want to switch faces. You have to read its mind. You got to read its mind. <laughs> so I did like the R5C. It's a nice little upgrade to that. Yeah. Yeah, and I have to say just how naturally it acquires focus mm -hmm. and it, it was very fast, but even when we hopped out of the frame and then hopped back in or we were trying to steal who was in focus, <laughs> um, I thought it had a very nice natural look to it. Also, we are all wearing glasses today and in times like that, I trust the eye autofocus a little bit more because sometimes when it's doing the full face, it might be a little forward, it mm -hmm. might kind of hit the rim of our glasses, whereas the eye more. wants to set yeah. it back into the, the more accurate place. So I liked to see that in the R5C. All right, Tyler, so now you've had a bit of time with R5C and knowing from your previous experience with your setup, if you could go back in time or even <laughs> recommend to someone um, you know, what to get going with so that they could do similar type of work that you do, uh, what, how would you go about <laughs> recommending? I mean, as always, this totally depends on what you're doing. Uh, the things that I'm doing require a bit more of a split between, like, I, like, I like a video camera first and then like a photo camera separate, but that's just me. If you are somebody that really needs that hybrid and photography and video are both very important to you and you only want to have one body to carry around, the R5C is like perfect for that. But if video comes first, I still prefer the C70 because it's got that built-in ND, mm -hmm. it has the uh, C-Log2 that I like and- <laughs> Bigger uh, battery. And the battery, yeah. The power options are just more flexible. Um, so this would always be my video first choice. Um, but if, if photos are important as well, this can absolutely do just as good of a job, but with you know those minor complexities of adding an ND and battery. Yeah, the more we talk about it, the more I, I look at these cameras, and in, in my sort of opinion, the, the R5 is a fantastic stills camera, but it's kind of like an 80-20 camera. 80% 80 stills, 20% video. It's mm -hmm. capable of very good quality video. Yeah, well, and you should mention, though, that with this camera, you can tap into those high oh, yeah. video features. Mm -hmm. um, you're just limited because it can, it can overheat quickly. <laughs> also, one more time to advocate for, if you're doing the C70, the adapter is what will bring it to the same level as these. Um, if you're not using the adapter, it'll be Super 35. You're gonna have a different set of lenses. Yeah, so the R5C is a very compelling camera for a lot of different markets, but it's mm -hmm. truly a 50-50 camera. Well, Tyler, I want to thank you for inviting us to your studio, doing some tests oh, with us. My pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for coming, guys. It was great. Yeah, and of course, if you don't know Tyler Stallman already, you have to check him out on YouTube. He's going to talk a little bit more about this camera on his channel, as well as his computer reviews, he has some camera reviews, a lot of really great content. All of it. Um, but yeah, it's so great that we have him <laughs> in Calgary, and, and we, can, we can hang out and talk about these cameras. Yeah, thanks guys. Yeah, and of course we want to know what do you guys think about the R5C? Is this something that's on your radar? Are you looking for a hybrid camera that's between the photo and the cinema side? Um, are you still kind of torn between the two other models? We want to know in the comments below. Make sure you follow all three of us on Instagram. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so we can catch you again very soon. sticking around and watching this very special episode with Tyler Stallman. If you want to check out our more recent episodes, click up here. And if you're a Canadian, you want to shop local, check out the camastore.com down here.